I'm James Jones. I'm a solutions architect for the Nginx BU at F5 Networks. And we're gonna kind of, um, gonna continue on, you know, I iterating on what Libby and Timo have uh, shown you. And so we've got the WordPress, Node.js inside the Nginx unit server. And in this demo, we're going to put Nginx, proc, uh, uh, Nginx Plus in it, acting as a uh, load balancer with a uh, with some micro caching to help take some of the load off that unit server. And additionally, we're also going to add some uh, ability for Prometheus to scrape, uh, scrape metrics off of it so you can get kind of better visibility into what's happening inside the environment. So if we go over to code first, let's we'll, we'll take a quick look at the Docker Compose file. And what we have here is typically, you know, we have the DB as before, the WordPress. Actually, let me make that a little bit bigger. So everybody can see it. I think that'd be better. And then we have the um, load balancer here that's dependent on the WordPress service in Docker Compose. And then I'm making it easier to modify configuration files and do, that way you can do like Nginx reload and not have to do, you know, Docker Compose down or Control C. You can just uh, reload right there uh, from disk to make it easy. And then if we look at the uh, Docker file here, this is just kind of, I think we've got demos of this, of how you build the plus container. Um, so if you have a plus license, this is a really good way, you know, we have some really good cookie cutter ways of building containers, even for um, putting it inside Kubernetes or Docker. And then Let's talk about the Nginx config for a moment. So with this, we the ones that we want to really focus on, not so much the app protect, that's, that's a different demo. Um, we have the modules here, we're, lo we're loading the JavaScript module um, and that's for the uh, Prometheus metrics because we actually call out to a, um, a call out to a Java function or JavaScript, not Java, JavaScript function to um, scrape the metrics off the Nginx API so they so Prometheus can come and grab them. And that's the, all the relevant stuff here. And so if we look here, we start off by setting up the storage space for the micro caching. So as you can see, I only set aside one gig for each uh, cache, because I'm caching both for the API and for the WordPress site. And then giving them a label saying that they can cat the, any items cached in here are valid for 10 minutes. Then to find the error log, and then I have these two upstreams. Now this is actually an interesting feature of uh, Nginx Plus is we have the, um, we have the ability to do what we call service discovery. And I'll actually will, will find all the servers for this and I'll spin up more than one WordPress node so we can actually prop and actually do some load balancing. And then with the, pro with the proxy and the caching here, you wanna make sure you set up your key this is the hash that gets that gets used for generating the um, place where it gets stored on disk, um, and that could be any any of the uh, built-in variables for Nginx that are available. And then you give it a uh, you say which cache that you're using. So this is the one for the WordPress site. So this is going to the Nginx space cache, which is defined here with this key zone cache, and then obviously that's how where that relationship comes from. And same thing down here with the API. 
you say which statuses you want to be able to cache and for how long then this is hand setting the host header because you want to be able to hand off with the actual host that they requested off to the machine you're load balancing up to or your upstream server and then passing it off and then i'm adding a um, header back to tell me if what i requested is a hit or miss inside the cache And then for, for the metrics, this is our typical, this is a typical setup you would see when you're um, using the uh, Nginx Plus dashboard on a single instance. And here we're including the Prometheus um, JavaScript module that we, we've written. We're setting our access log. We're setting this as a default server. Nice. Don't know if we want that as actually want that as default, but it's set as a default server here. And this the slash API API, and the API write on allows me to actually make changes within the API. So if I wanted to write something to our key value store, or I wanted to through our API uh, take off uh, remove one of the upstream servers, um, and then pointing the location for the dashboard HTML, that's the actual dashboard that you load up, and then slash metrics is what calls the uh, fu JavaScript function. So you have the JS content that grabs the, um, which grabs whatever string is returned by that function is what gets served back um, to, the, to the client that made the request. And we're gonna go ahead and spin this up. Set scale. We're going to say WordPress. We'll, we'll bring up five instances of the WordPress. So just for clarity, while that spins up, is mm -hmm. that uh, load balancer then just going to take them all down and put them all up at the same time? Like, would you end up doing like a rolling restart in that case if you wanted to just not have yeah. to use yeah. Yeah. You would want to do something like a rolling restart, um, but this is taking advantage of the service discovery features that are built in when you start, when you use Docker Compose. Um, you can do similar things inside Kubernetes as well, or you just point to the service name, and it'll actually go and get all of the hosts that are part of that DNS query. Um, but in the Kubernetes, you actually have to specify the uh, resolver directive and this not so much because it's all kind of built in so this is up now and so let me start another incognito window f12 so we can see stuff loading up and we'll go to nginx space and as you can see we got the first here and you can see here, I, I don't know if I can make this bigger. I can't. There we go. That was very hard to read, even for me. So you can see here that that the just the index was a miss on the cache, right? And so everything here is probably going to be a miss. But it's the first request on these set of servers. Now, if we load up, so if we bring this up, we can see that we've, some of the traffic you'll see here is the AP, request going to the API. So let's look at the uh, HTTP upstreams. So we can see that some of my requests were load balanced between um, dot five and dot four here. And so Nginx was able, was smart enough to go out, find all the hosts, and all I had to specify was, was only one, one host in the upstream, but it went and found them all because of service discovery. And then if we go over here, And we reload this. Ah, I didn't. 
it didn't split the screen properly. There we go. And if we reload this, you know, let me just make it so it fits in the window. That's so now if you look, we have a cache hit. And we can actually see that our request counts didn't go up because everything was handled by Nginx on the front end and um, handing out what it, what it got from the uh, cache. And they kind of illustrate that a little bit further. Where, there it is. Nope, that's the wrong ID. This one, I, this ID. We bring up another window here. May have it in my history. Buffer. There we go. And then, if we clear out the these directories here. And we look and we go ahead and reload this. Now, if you, so we can all see that this is, see, miss, miss, I'm looking, I'm looking at this cache header. So these are all misses. And if I, and now if we go back and look at the dashboard, we can see there's been more requests made and on different hosts this time too and look at the look at the amount of time it took to load this we got it was about 1.7 seconds now if you reload it do it from here we got we almost you know about 300 milliseconds reload time. And these are, these caches hit, that must not have been requested before because I didn't click around. But most of the items that it was requested came out of the cache. That looks very cool, cool and I think it's really fast and the service. Could you, you mentioned a couple of times the service discovery. Could you tell a bit about that, how it works then? So with the service discovery, it what happens is it goes out to a, um, it makes a DNS request, right? So it will do one of two things. It will initially do, try to do an SRV lookup, and then it will discover all from the SRV location you want it to go to, and then it will do a DNS, uh, uh, just a regular A record lookup or quad A, depending if you're using IPv6. And then it will take all of the hosts out of that record and add them to the upstream automatically. And that's what's been done here. And so, does that, does that make sense? Yes, that sounds cool. All right. Um, and the other thing to kind of show, so all of the statistics that you're getting here, you know, with the HTTP zone data, the upstreams, the caching, the shared zone, and the even the these main statistics are all available and you can, for this particular example, you can, you can go in, scrape, pull them out right out of the API. This is set up so Prometheus can come and grab it, but this will um, integrate pretty much with any um, metrics pipelining that you want to use. You know, um, we, you know, F5's beacon, um, 
We also have, you know, ELK, InfluxDB, all, all of those tools. And you can create a, a really good way from our API to get really detailed and get a better view of what's going on in your environment. And that way you can actually see, okay, you know, we're starting to hit a little capacity, you know, we're getting, our response times are going down, things are taking a little longer to render. So you can, you know, build that capacity based on these analytics that you see right here. The service discovery piece that we're seeing right here, is that strictly a Nginx plus feature? That's an Nginx plus only feature, yes. Okay, and then the same thing for the Prometheus stats? Uh, yes, this is something that we wrote for our customers. So do you have any examples online of maybe uh, using the API with a different logging backend? Like someone can just go to a GitHub repo to check it out? Um, if you wanted to see more about our repo, I think, or about our API, you can go to, um, so it's demo.nginx.com slash swagger hyphen UI. And actually one of the really cool things that I have, I'm actually working on a few things and I'm actually using the key value store that's built into Nginx, which is actually really useful. You can actually even use the key value stores within your configuration. So you can actually do lookups for IP address and see if they're part of a particular CIDR or not with the key value store. So a lot of good, a lot of good information there. Is there a way to change the weighting on, on, on those backends? So you, you can- Absolutely. So via the API, you can change the weights. Um, so if we go back and look at the upstreams, let me just make this a little bit bigger. You actually have the ability to make edits. Do you hear? And so anything that you see that I can change within this UI, I can change via the API. And in the um, gentleman that was talking about the rolling restarts, right? So if you're gonna automate it, you actually would wanna go in here, set, the, set that node to drain, right? So it finishes up anything that already has in flight, but doesn't accept any more new connections. And then once, uh, once it's done, the, the worker will exit. And then you can look at the, you can, look at the statistics and know that you don't have any current any more concurrent connections do what you need to do with that particular machine bring it back into service then set it back to up and again if you're also doing service discovery with it that you can actually you can unregister and re-register the service with service discovery and it would automatically be taken in and out of the pool as well